Hello, this is your Graceful Ager, and this series is Grief, Widowhood, and Faith. If you have subscribed and are following the series, you have met some professionals who impact lives of people in different ways. I wanted to show you that it takes a village and community can help you along in your grief. There are not only opportunities to create strong relationships through faith, for encouragement and uplifting, through prayers and the Word of God. There are also many resources to restore health and confidence in how you look and feel. As it is said, health is wealth. So today, my very special guest is Sylvia Adler, and the benefit she brings to her community is how to improve breathing and restore overall health of our body and our emotions. Hello, Sylvia. Thank you for being here today. Hi, Grace. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. For me, it's an honor. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm dealing with this cough thing. So if I lose my voice, you know what it is. Uh, but thank you for this opportunity, because as you know, I'm passionate about teaching people how to deal with uh, so many different things. And it doesn't have to be difficult. And just like what you said, it takes a village. So thank you for including me in your village. Yeah, thank you so much. You are not a widow, but you are currently dealing a uh, grief that, I don't know, sometimes watching someone suffering a loved one is harder than, you know, they've gone to be with the Lord. Would you share a little bit of that today and also share you, about you, who you are and what your passion is? Of course, thank you so much. So I'll start with that. My name is Sylvia Adler. I'm a certified integrative nutrition health coach and a certified breath coach. And uh, my passion is truly to help people deal with either health issues or grief or just a simple way and right now i'm focusing very deeply on breathing because it's the thing that we all do from the day we're born to the day we pass away and we fail to see the importance of breathing better so that's what i teach also i have been working for a hospice company for 10 years now i started 10 years ago as a volunteer and then i was hired so in hospice obviously we deal a lot with grief, right? Very intense grief and stress and anxiety. So I've been helping people deal with that for a long time. And my own personal journey is that I've been dealing actually through the pandemic. And this is something that I haven't shared with you, Grace. I actually lost count. I think it got up to about 25 people that I was either related to or that I knew who passed away in a span of about a year, year and a half. I personally feel that I'm equipped to help people deal with grief and stress and anxiety. And it can be very easy. So I would love to teach you all in a little bit, but um, my, I've been dealing also with uh, my husband's extended illness. He was diagnosed with uh, multiple myeloma 17 years ago. So we've been on a long, long road dealing with that, all sorts of chemos and radiations and stem cell transplants, and, and we're still dealing with that. Thank goodness he was diagnosed at a very early stage, so that has helped his journey tremendously. But there's an ongoing sense of stress, right, and dealing with all of that. So basically, that's a little bit about me, what I do, and um, I don't know, Grace, what, what else do you want me to? Uh, so how do you use breathing to cope with your own grief? Well, basically, and I don't want to go into a biology class, right? Uh, I mean, of course. Because uh, we all know that the day we're born, we start breathing, and thanks to the autonomic nervous system, we breathe, because otherwise we probably would forget. And even then, we guilty as charged here sometimes we hold our breath and we don't breathe right either because of stress or because we're so focused on dealing with something that before we know it's like oh my gosh i'm not breathing so the second you allow a breath in you feel it you feel it it's like oh my gosh <laughs> so 
The cells, every one of our trillions of cells needs oxygen to function. And because we breathe so dysfunctionally, especially when we are under stress or anxious or grieving, we tend to repress everything. So that lack of oxygen to our cells affects all of our organs, our brain, everything, how we function. So it almost aggravates that sense of stress and anxiety and grief, right? So one thing that I want for people to understand is that breath work is about mindful, intentional breathing. And people have the great misconception that it's all about taking deep breaths and, and that's going to do it. Well, no. I mean, there's a plethora of different breathing techniques and different kinds of breaths. I teach um, functional breathing because I want people to understand the importance of just the proper breathing. We have been so stuck in dysfunctional breathing for so long, Grace, that our lungs have sort of constricted, right? And we only use a third of the capacity of our lungs just so that you understand how this minimized breathing affects how the lungs function. So my intention is to help people learn simple breathing techniques that they can put into practice before they get out of bed. And that's what I tell people, look, before you get out of bed and you deal with a whole day of craziness, mm -hmm. dedicate five or 10 minutes <clears throat> to doing a few breathing techniques and then when you go to bed because it will help you sleep better but how i do it i mean i've i've been i personally have been doing meditation early in the morning i start and sometimes i do 15 minutes sometimes 30 minutes or sometimes i only do five minutes so i i don't have a set routine but all i can tell you is i notice a huge difference when even though i teach it i'm still human and i still forget to do it the second i start mindfully allowing that air to go in through the nose so that it's filtered and warmed up into the lungs and then holding that breath for a count of four so there's as i say there's so many different breaths that i could teach and that's what i do Rob. you're going to be going through that uh, in a little bit Okay. So, uh, just in a briefly, what are the top three things that poor breathing can cause? So basically, what I want people to start thinking of is you achieve a whole lot more by just becoming more aware of how you breathe throughout the day and counting, being mindful about breathing into a count of three or four and exhaling. Yeah. As you can hear, when I exhale, I do it through the mouth. I do what they call ocean breath because it's like a relaxation method. So just doing that, it's called coherent breathing. If you can count up to six, that's the ideal because we're breathing about, what is it, about 30,000 times a day when it should be closer to 11,000. And that's because we do such quick, fast breathing yeah. that we're breathing between 20 times a minute when it should be about six or seven. So just slowing down your breath is going to help you tremendously. What are the top three signs that we're not breathing properly? Well, there's a, a lot of signs, actually. I mean, first of all... Top three things that come to your mind that you believe... Lack of energy. About. Lack of energy. If you feel... Um, kind of like morose or, or tired, like a brain fog. Yeah. A lot of times that's because you're not breathing well. Right. Uh, that That is truly one of the first ones that comes to mind because it's it's the most, uh, the one that you notice the most. I think stress would be one that... Uh, yeah, I mean, but I mean, the stress is not necessarily because you're not breathing. I mean, the stress is a lot of times because of the thoughts that are going through our brains and how we interpret those thoughts mm -hmm. and it makes us go into the anxiety or stress mode. With the breathing, you activate the vagus nerve, which is what helps you 
go into the repose and uh, rest and relax mode. So one of, I mean, truly one of the main things is if you start feeling yourself like you're, I get a lot of, uh, a bit of a headache. Yeah. Actually, when I'm not breathing properly, it's like my brain starts kind of like letting me know, hey, right. hello. So listen to your body because our bodies are very wise and we're so used to not listening. But a lot of times our bodies are telling us what we need to do, drink more water. That's, I mean, that's another thing that is really important when you're going through grief or stress and anxiety. Keep really well hydrated. We're 75% water. And a lot of times my father, when he died, Grace, his death certificate actually said, cause of death, chronic dehydration. My dad hardly ever drank water. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of issues, but I mean, truly, I, I, I cannot tell you that there's three. I mean, the the fact that you feel tired, uh, a little bit of brain, brain fog. Um, and then if you cannot, if, okay, if you go up a flight of stairs and you're out of breath, that is the key point that you're not breathing deeply enough, right? Mm -hmm. So your, your lungs are constricted. And we need to get that diaphragm working properly. So that's what I teach. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, as I say, there's people who teach meditation and people who teach yoga and people who teach uh, going to the ice and doing all sorts of interesting. That's not what I do. I teach functional breathing because I want people to do it throughout the day. It's not something, oh, I don't have time to breathe today. Guess what? You're breathing all day long. So learn to do it slower and more intentionally throughout the day and you will notice a difference yeah it's uh it's really important uh i i know that breathing shallow is also a cause of a lot of diseases totally exactly uh, so yeah in my research i actually wrote a blog about it okay so it's really hard for people to remember as you know we're guilty of doing all the shallow breathing is there anything you can suggest that we should do to be more aware of our breathing? Um, well, connect with me because I can set you up on a little routine that you can do every day. And I send you reminders. Um, there's actually something that I'm going to start selling and I don't have it with me here. It's a little device called the breather. And it's a medical device, actually, and it's uh, designed to help people strengthen their their breathing muscles. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be talking a lot more about that in the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not expensive. It's like $45 for this thing, but it's really, really effective. Uh, and you do it in the morning and in the evening. And I notice a big difference in it's like, almost automatically. It's like, oh, my gosh. I can breathe in deeper, right? You you noticed a difference, so I'd love I'd love the information on that, and I'd love to have that information on the uh, description uh, for, oh, this, love uh, to. for this because yes. I think a lot of people will benefit from that. <laughs> I have an affiliate uh, code that I can give you, and you get twenty five percent off. Okay, so we can talk about that when we're we get off and see how I can participate in that because I would love my viewers to have access to that information. So you, would you mind demonstra demonstrating a, a simple way to breathe properly? I, in my reading, in my research, uh, it says uh, six breaths in one minute. That's correct. So could you demonstrate? So how you achieve that, as I mentioned before, is by counting. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of just uh, spending five or 10 minutes just mindfully doing it because the more you do it, the more it becomes a habit and you catch yourself. So as I said, a lot of people can only do like counting up to four because they're not used to it. If you can breathe in counting to six, that is how you get to breathing six times a minute. So it would go like this. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's okay. start. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Exhale. 
And if I may just um, interrupt here, because this is important, and this is part of what I teach people. People are so used to thinking that this is a deep breath. That is a very shallow breath, just dramatic shallow breath. We need to get that diaphragm engaged. And that is why when you breathe in, you need to feel like you're blowing a balloon in your stomach. So you're sending all that air to your stomach and then filling the chest. And then when you exhale, you contract the stomach muscles and then you exhale. Okay. And that is how you manage to do the six counts, because if you're only breathing from up to here, uh, you're not going to be able to do the six count. So you need to do it diaphragmatically. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So that is just a simple way of becoming more mindful about how you breathe. As I say, there's a whole bunch of different breaths. Like, I don't know if you've heard of the box breath. Yes, it's the four. It's magical. Eight, seven or four, seven and eight. It's, well, no, the box is four, 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 four. Oh, okay. That's why it's called a box. But Dr. Weil invented the four, seven, eight. So that's breathing into four, holding for seven, and then exhaling to eight. Yes. So there's a whole lot of different ways, and it affects the body differently. I would love to get a hold of that uh, tool that you have, and I would love to get a get sign in for a, a session with you on how to do this, because I think... It, it, we are all guilty of it and you're right everything is the brain the brain needs that water the brain needs that oxygen and the it needs the oxygen needs to get the junk out exactly yeah. you heard about the brain gut access right i mean how our gut health is linked to our brain health and how it's vital for everything else to work properly it is it is Yes, indeed. I, I'm so grateful to have you on this. And uh, Sylvia's information will be in the description. I believe that she has a great uh, tool that's coming up that she's going to share with us. And also take advantage of her complimentary uh, thing that she's offering. It will all be in the description. and. Please remember that a strong physical, emotional, and spiritual foundation is central to emerging a victor and not a victim. Yes. Watch the video to learn more. Follow Sylvia in her uh, Instagram or Facebook and uh, subscribe to this channel, like it, and share it with someone who you know can benefit from it and we will be encouraged by the information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sylvia. Oh my gosh, thank you, Grace. I feel blessed for this opportunity.